Hi friends, welcome back to HTML Lectures. This is Hadan Mustafa. Let us continue with our tally lecture. In today's class, we are going to study how to enable GST features in tally. First of all, let us open a company for which you want to enable the GST. I have already opened HTML Lectures for this purpose. After selecting the company, let us go to F11 features. In the F11 features, you have three features accounting feature, inventory feature, statutory and taxation. So for this we have to select statutory and taxation. Here you can see all the statutory and taxation related features in this option. First of all GST, then second one VAT, excise duty, service tax, TDS, TCS, everything is here. Now we are going to see how we can enable goods and service tax. So for this you have to type here yes for enabling GST. After that it is asking to set or alter GST detail. Here also you have to click yes then press enter so that a new window will open regarding the GST details. There are some details to be filled in this dialog box. So let us first select the state in which we are doing the business. For me it's Delhi. Then second thing is the registration type. Whether you are a regular taxpayer or a composite taxpayer. Based on your registration, you can select whatever the uh, registration you have taken. I am a regular taxpayer, so I take regular. Next one is SSC of other territory. To know more about this SSC of other territory, you have to go for reference in section 2, subsection 81 of GST Act, where you can see other territory feature there it's explaining about the other territory so if you want to know about the SSC of other territory you can go for section 2 subsection 81 here in this case uh, we are not the SSC of other territory so I'm clicking no after this we have to select the date from which we have taken the GST registration the GST applicable from normally it will give here the opening date of the financial year but if you have taken the registration after the financial year, then you have to give the date here. For me, it's 1st April 2020. I am not changing it. Then next, they are asking GST IN or UIN number. I have already selected a GST number. Okay, so I am giving the GST number here. Then it's asking me periodicity of GST R1. GSTR1 is one of the report in GST report, GST return, where you have to fill the sales related details. This can be done in monthly basis or quarterly basis. So uh, it is based on your adoption. Whatever the option you have taken for GSTR1, that option you can select here. You can either go for monthly or quarterly. I go for monthly. Then next one is the applicability of eBay bill. See, if you have any transaction above 50,000, then you have to take a eBay bill if the transaction is uh, having some transportation also. So for this purpose, you have to enable eBay bill. So I am clicking hit yes if uh, because I have an eBay bill maybe. So when you, only if you select this eBay bill option, then only at the time of transaction or the time of entering voucher, it will be asking you to enter the details regarding the eBay bills also. So you have to enable it yes if you are having eBay bill application. Next one is applicable from. They are asking from which date your eBay bill is applicable. Then the basis of threshold, whether it's based on the invoice value, tax or exempted goods value, taxable value whatever it's based on the rule that is given by different different state so it may vary 
you can select it based on the state in which you are and you can give the threshold limit also generally it's 50,000 but in certain states they have increased or decreased the threshold limit for those states they can give their own threshold limit and applicable for intra-state intra-state means within the state within the state also you may have a different threshold if they have different threshold within the state and another threshold for outside the state then they can give those all details separately in this eBay build related information. Next to feature is enable tax liability on advance receipt. See there are certain services on which GST have to be paid on the time of advance itself. Not on the invoice date or the time of supply or completion of the transaction but at the time of advance. So in that case, you have to enable this feature, yes, then only whenever you make an advance payment, it will ask whether GST is applicable or not. So uh, this is only applicable for service sector, for goods uh, provider, it is not applicable. So for service provider, if there is any advance tax payable, uh, then you have to make it yes. Okay. Next one is enable tax liability on reverse charge generally the tax liability is on supplier those who are supplying they have to collect the tax and they have to pay but in certain cases it uh, the responsibility lies with the recipient in that case if you are having a whenever you purchase a product you are have to pay gst means you are a reverse charges recipient in that case you have to enable this feature then only you can uh, get the feature of reverse charge in your purchase transaction next one is set or alter gst rate details generally uh, we can make it as no when you have different tax rates you should not make it yes when you have different types of tax rate in your goods or services only if you have a single rate for all the supplies then you can give here yes and you can give what is the nature of that supply and what is the rate if I am having an 18% rate supply only in my transaction then I can give here and you can save it but if you have different rates applicable in your transaction then you can not update in this uh, field you have to go for other options like you have to set GST details GST details at the time of making stock or at the time of creating ledger okay it's not at this point the next one is enable GST classification this is also very important uh, because in GST, there are different types of transactions applicable in GST like deemed export, uh, supply to intrastate supplier, interstate supplier, unregistered person, all these are applicable. So if you want the classification separately, then you have to click it yes, then only whenever you enter a transaction, they will ask you what is the nature of transaction. Then you can give the correct transaction type and it will be classified accordingly. The last feature is provide LUT or bond details. See, LUT means letter of undertaking. Letter of undertaking. This is given by the exporter. Those who are exporting out of the country, though they have to give a undertaking to the department regarding the conditions applicable for exporter. Because export is an exempted good or there is no tax applicable in case of export it is zero rated so that in order to avail the exemption for GST the people the exporter have to provide an undertaking that we will be following all the conditions uh, that have been mentioned or prescribed in the rules so if you have any undertaking given to the department then you can give the ETS and you can fill the undertaking number or bond number and the validity from and to of the undertaking. After that you have to press enter then you have to accept. 
now your GST feature is enabled now you can save it after saving to know whether the GST features are enabled or not you can go for gateway of tally then you can see here a display button click on the display then you can see statutory report click on that there you can see GST feature here when you open GST feature then you can see all the GST related details are given in this tab GSTR 1, 2, 3B, GST annual computation, EV bill, challenge reconciliation, GST rate, setup, update, party, GST IM, all these details you can see here. So this is how you enable GST features. There are other things in the GST like voucher creation with the GST transaction and stock creation with the GST transaction. All this we will be discussing in the coming lectures. So keep on watching my channel and support my channel. Subscribe and like my channel. Uh, uh, whatever the doubt you have, you can ask me in the comment. I will be giving the video or uh, through comment. I will be explaining to you whatever is your doubt. Okay. So once again, thank you.